Welcome everyone to our Sunday night stream and tonight I have two lovely guests Jenny and Björn Pankratz from Piranha Bytes. Hi. Hello. Um, Björn is one of the very few people on this planet, in this universe and beyond, oh who have actually collaborated or worked on all the Piranha Bytes games. Yeah. From Gothic 1 yeah. to Elex. Yeah. So uh, it's going to be a time travel um, like along the project that Piranha Bytes has released. And I have the official permission to not just talk about the projects, but also talk a little bit private, which I look very much forward to. Well, are you ready to make a real Gothic 4? Please, greetings from Poland. This is one of the probably most frequently reoccurring questions ever, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, would, would you like to do a new Gothic game? Like, if we talk privately? Yes, of course. Uh, no, there's a reason why I'm wearing this uh, mm -hmm. sleeper uh, amulet here and uh, yes of course we love uh, fantasy games we love uh, the gothic universe mm -hmm. and so on uh, yeah but uh, yeah there are no plans for uh, another title in the gothic universe mm -hmm. okay yet all right <laughs> we have uh, too much ideas and uh, less time <laughs> yeah i see <laughs> for him um, who wrote the Cromanian series in Gothic 1 and what are the meaning of them? Uh, Cromanian, that's w that was myself. This was mm. That was uh, one of the first uh, things I made uh, for the story department, uh, mm -hmm. as I can say so. And Cromanian is, uh, <coughs> yeah, is such a thing, uh, wie nennt man uh, Schnitzeljacht in mm -hmm. English? Treasure hunt? Treasure yes. hunt or something, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 You have to find many uh, books there and uh, it was the easiest way to implement uh, some quest mm -hmm. without dialogues because uh, there, there uh, uh, I, I knew that there would be no um, uh, additional uh, recordings, voice mm -hmm. recordings, and so uh, I, I, uh, I, I thought about uh, making quests anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so I, I thought, okay, uh, I said, okay, a text was okay, written mm -hmm. text, and so I invented this uh, Cromani series, mm -hmm. and so it was, uh, yeah, some kind of uh, uh, riddles, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. one step by another, yeah. and in the end, uh, there you uh, find the. Uh, 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 yeah, fog uh, tower or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in 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 the in the uh, beach area there, mm -hmm. and uh, there was a, a cave um, under this uh, um, uh, tower, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, there was something planned in the in, in the um, the past, but uh, no one uh, really. Um, used it for anything yeah. and so I thought okay uh, there could be the end of this um, yeah. step by step uh, quest thing and uh, so I implemented uh, some kind of uh, skeleton demon or yeah. so yeah who was responsible for all these riddles and something ah, like interesting yeah, yeah. and that it, it was a part of uh, 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 the patch one of the patches we made for Gothic 1 and mm -hmm. so uh, yeah it was uh, yeah, yeah. Some kind of additional content we do you remember if that tower was the one that initially should have a gong on the top, like a very mighty gong? Or May, maybe. Because I, there was a concept art of something ah, like that okay. and it never showed up in the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And this, uh, that's the, maybe the reason why this uh, tower never uh, was, was a part of, of anything, okay. of, of the main story or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. Okay. So. Tazuki Rex asked why in the Gothic series and other Piranha Bytes games the women are of very less uh, the, are very less aspect. I don't mean Gothic one, although it's probably the same in Gothic one as well. <laughs> Björn, would you like to answer this question? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, it's a matter of uh, of uh, um, of asset uh, production yeah, in the mm -hmm. first place because. Uh, uh, we uh, have a small team and uh, we thought about uh, uh, bringing in all the guilds and and uh, different um, colored people and stuff like that and mm -hmm. so we decided to to uh, produce um, uh, human males mm -hmm. only mm -hmm. in the first place mm -hmm. and uh, add some um, uh, women's afterwards yeah? mm -hmm. and uh, yeah but we um, <coughs> Are, uh, and at the moment we uh, produce many um, different uh, women as well in our games. Yeah. For, for example, there are two strong um, uh, women in Elex, yeah? mm -hmm. uh, the Nasty and uh, Akaya. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think, um, yeah, yeah, it's getting better yeah, yeah, from yeah. project to project, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
And in the early uh, games, women also in the lore played uh, a different role than men. In the prison colony, they were essentially slaves. Yes. So that was like how it all started in Gothic 1. Uh, are you guys following the, our newest upcoming Polish projects for Gothic? Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff. Much love from Poland. You're the Hans Zimmer of video games. Thank you very much. Um, you mean things like mods and uh, multiplayer extensions and so on. Do you know some of them? Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as often as we can, we mm -hmm. uh, have a look at uh, some projects and mods. Mm -hmm. And um, many people also uh, send us um, emails and uh, um, stuff that we can have a look yeah. to. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we uh, see a lot of things. Okay. And sometimes um, if there's something cool, we also um, pick them up and show them in different uh, social media mm -hmm. channels. Okay, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. um, is Risen a part of the Gothic universe? The end of Risen 1 and the end of Gothic 3 seem almost the same. Yeah, they seem almost the same. Um, <laughs> but we never said that it uh, is the, uh, the same universe. Huh? Okay. Huh. Okay, so there was a question about whether there was un unreleased, previously unreleased material from Gothic, uh, like models, textures, no. music pieces. And Björn rightfully uh, assumed that this question is aiming at um, the, the Gothic sequel, which is something that showed up a few, I think, weeks or months ago on the internet. Mm -hmm. And um, the, your official, and I'm not going to say that this is an official answer, but your, your personal answer was that um, there, was a team, there was a team working on something that could be called the Gothic sequel, but it's not the official like Piranha Bytes branch team. So, um, and some of the assets that were created were migrated over into Gothic 2 when Gothic 2 w went in development, but everything else is not in your area of responsibility and also not at your disposal. Yeah. So you don't really have access to those assets. Although uh, there are some of them uh, on the internet and some mod teams are obviously working with them. You yourself never got your hands on them. Um, right. So, Victor Wayne. <coughs> I'm sorry. Hello, Kai, Björn and Jenny. Björn and Jenny, first of all, I want to say thank you for Elex. I liked the game and I enjoyed spending time exploring this world. Could you add a little hardcore to Elex 2 in the form of not making the quests on the map? Um, okay, so since this is about Elex 2, um, this is not the right stream to reveal anything about the future of Elex or any future projects coming from... But the question goes anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, would you like to answer the rest of it? Uh, yeah, or just add this feature into the game settings. For fans of the old school RPG, mm -hmm. there is uh, such an old joke. Mm -hmm. Other RPG, you here and uh, you you should go there, Gothic 3, Xada, somewhere in this world, good luck. Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so um, you can choose by your own if you um, use uh, map uh, points or not. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, yeah, this is the thing, if we... Um, um, when we this not anbieten, won't offer it. Yeah, mm -hmm. if, we, if we won't offer those um, points um, mm -hmm. at all, uh, then it would be very difficult for many players to do the quest because um, it's um, a little bit um, frustrating. Frustrating. <laughs> frustrating. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No problem. Um, and um, so uh, we chose that you can uh, choose by your own, so you don't have to use them but you can do it not mm -hmm. in every case uh, it's uh, in the first um, minutes or so uh, in the first tutorial we force these uh, kind of uh, map markers mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's a kind of a tutorial or something for the quest mechanics we offer there mm -hmm. and um, but in the further um, uh, time of, uh, of the uh, of the game you uh, yeah just don't use it yeah, yeah. Uh, you d uh, we don't force you to use this kind of feature and uh, yeah. yeah so the yeah. comment that just came in from Elexus um, oh no it was uh, hang on um, I IOL uh, you can choose between map pointers and an unplayable game that's the reason why you put them in because people will complain that the game uh, it is too too challenging to find the, the plot points in the map right that's why you added them in the first place yeah we have many dialogues and many explanations and you can use a lock of course but it's a really really huge world and very um, <coughs> yeah um, you can imagine if you build such a huge world um, many places are not ready if we are um, 
stopping writing the dialogues. Mm -hmm. So uh, we go into the uh, lo um, localization and so on, and uh, the um, world is um, um, yeah will be built. Um, Immer noch. Mm, still. Mm. Still. Mm. Um, and uh, so it's really challenging, yeah. like you said. Yeah. yeah. Um, Marty Party. A lot of people are saying that your combat system uh, sucks, Björn. What do you think about it? And do you have some ideas for Gothic in the future? <laughs> yeah, there are many ideas for hmm. many things in the future. But uh, yeah, okay, the combat system. Yeah, the combat system is um, is okay, uh, I think. But uh, the people criticizing the um, movement often mm -hmm. and the uh, animation transitions and something like that. And mm -hmm. uh, I think there is uh, much work to do to make this better. Mm -hmm. I, I see this point. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, um, it's a small team, as I said. So mm -hmm. and, and this was uh, uh, one of the solutions for uh, our game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, but um, yeah, maybe the next time it will be better. Mm -hmm. Another point is that the first 20 hours are really hard. Yeah. So after mm -hmm. Risen 3, many <coughs> people um, wanted to have a, a di more difficult game. And uh, we made a more difficult game, mm -hmm. but there are also many people who die really often. Yeah. And um, maybe it would be an idea um, also to uh, put a kind of story mode into the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Tazuki Rex, who is responsible for the costume design in your games? I really like the co the costumes. I even have the cosplay Voodoo Pirate from Risen One. Uh, sorry, from Risen Three, and planning to make more. Um, mm. Yeah, there sweetness. Are, yeah, there are uh, <laughs> um, different uh, um, responsible uh, persons. Uh, first uh, of all, I think uh, I uh, can um, name the, the, the our art director at the moment is uh, uh, Alexander Ockelmann. Mm -hmm. And another uh, was in charge uh, uh, at uh, um, what was it? Risen Three was uh, Christopher Lerich. Mm -hmm. uh, Lerch, Lerch, Lerch. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we call him. Uh, his nickname is uh, Toffee. Yeah, <laughs> Toffee, uh, okay. and I, I think uh, now he's uh, working on uh, a title of uh, uh, Black Forest Games. I mm -hmm. think uh, mm -hmm. he's, he's part of the team who's in charge of uh, Fate to Silence or something. Okay. And uh, yeah, um, yeah, um, and the the, the um, I think uh, Timo Hilger. I can. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, mention here and uh, he's, he was a concept artist uh, of the costumes in uh, Risen 3 mm -hmm. I think in, in the in most cases yeah and thank you okay yeah, thank for you for mentioning them hmm? um, for Elex we had um, a, a two guys uh, they call uh, they're called lightning cosplay who created two cosplays uh, from our game Elex mm -hmm. and um, they also created a cosplay kit where you can um, have a look at um, how they made the costumes and you can um, download it from the internet. Lightning Cosplay was the name. Hmm, okay. And Tazuki Rex, if you want, uh, you can post a link to a photo from your Risen 3 cosplay uh, to the Discord server or maybe here in chat, uh, if Mike can give you uh, permission. And uh, we would love to see it. Thank you. And Iceblock, um, danke sehr für deine Bits. Lefty sent me. <laughs> I've brought you some water. Lefty sent me, I've brought you some water. Which game is that? Gothic one? Lefty? Oh, boah. Hmm. <laughs> I think it was Gothic one, yeah. Okay, Iceblock, you gotta you gotta help us. Which game was that? Um, obviously not Elex, otherwise you would no. have known. Okay. No. Um, so Originals. Uh, guys, how long did it take you to make Gothic One and how many people were working on it? It, it was a, a, a thrill ride. We started out with four founders plus three external coders, the mad scientists, mm -hmm. Bert, uh, Dieter and uh, Ulf. Ulf you know. um, uh, we had two external graphics people, uh, Horst and Mario, and uh, me for audio. And then in the course of those four years of development, I think, Yeah. We scaled up to 40 people. Four and a half or something. Or four yeah. and a half. Yeah, and I think so, yeah. I think the maximum was, was 40 people. And then near the end of Gothic 1, it downscaled again to around 15 to 20 people. Mm -hmm. 
So we had everything from 4 to 40. 